Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales of Space. Space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one, Knights of Singing Steel, written by Guncaster. There is one, one thing truly outstanding about humans as we know them. About Nova Hominum, as they call themselves. Not that is dense musculature, resilient endoskeleton, or exceptionally potent digestive fluids. Oh, God forbid, their unheard of and infectious xenophiliac tendencies. Not even those horrid, overactive immune systems of theirs. All of that, all of that deviancy still falls within acceptable margins. There are many extremes that scrape the realm of new categorizations. But somehow, the humans just managed to barely fall within the galactic average. Except for one thing. Not an exceptional parameter. A cognitive function that no other species within the galactic community has retained since their time as animals. And that is... Pack bonding. Not only did they retain their bonding instincts, due to the nature of how... They rose to the top of the food chain on their homeworld. Their bonding instinct is far more powerful than otherwise observed. So much so, that suppressing it with implants or modification causes serious psychological damage to the individual and renders them non-functional within human society. Humans, as far as we know, can and do bond with absolutely anything. Other humans, domesticated animals, wild animals, clothing, electronics, anything that they are in the presence of for an extended period of time, the humans can and will bond to in some way or another. We have all had that one friend, the poor guy that used a human's favorite cup. They'll be the first to tell you that a human bonding isn't just an overstated myth. And thus, we get to the heart of the stature. The reason why they, being as new as they are to the galactic stage, have the monopoly on defense contracts. There are specialists that single-handedly affect the field of living metal research by simply doing at will what took incalculable funds to perform under perfect conditions for fractions of a second. I'm sure you've all heard of and watched them before. The humans do seem quite infatuated with recording and uploading absolutely everything to the network. In the case of every species physically capable enough for direct combat, fighters practice with their equipment, hone their skill, get enhanced, and fight. That's it. It's a job like any other. There's outliers in terms of dedication and skill, but they're the exception, not the rule. As for humans... There's an old adage, and I do mean old. Before they left the home planet old, before they technically went extinct old, it originated in an era their ancestors called Anno Domini, and has been extensively modified over time. As it stands right now, being said every day by new human fighters in training, the adage goes as such. This is my weapon, there are many like it, but this one is mine. My weapon is my best friend. It is my life. Without me, my weapon is useless, and without it, I am useless. My weapon is human, as am I. For it is my life. Thus, I will learn it as a brother. I will learn its strengths, its weaknesses, each and every part of it, so that I may heal it as I would a wounded comrade in need. I shall not accept defeat in any quarters, and shall know my enemy as I know myself. I shall have such weapons, skills, and strategies that no foe will best me in battle. Never shall I ask for lighter burdens, but instead forge myself wider shoulders from the bones of those who would seek to pray on my comrades. And if the stars in the sky become my enemy, then void by my side I shall cleave the heavens themselves in twain. I am sure that it's been changed and corrupted over the millennia, but the essence remains the same. 
human fighters, human warriors, live and breathe combat. It becomes second nature to them, to the point where even retired fighters still possess such reflex of skill that it compares to a mil-spec grade wet wear. Before they changed themselves, the fighters had problems adjusting to not fighting on a regular basis. That's the secret to bringing out the spirit within living metal, so to speak. A weapon has no life of its own, even made of metal that grows and evolves as flesh does. One must trust their life to a weapon, nurture it as a comrade, rely upon it in times of need, and treasure it as one would a loved one. Regardless of creed, social standing, experience, or how expensive your chrome is, it doesn't matter if you can demolish a building with your fancy arm cannon. A human swordsman will just dodge it. It doesn't matter if you have reaction speeds in the milliseconds. A human blade master will predict your own decisions before you make them. It doesn't matter if you are worshipped as a god. A human sword saint will own their art and grasp their void through sheer skill and willpower. Not for fame, fortune, or glory, but to prove that they can kill a god. Next lesson is the unnamed swordsman that so many of you know as Omnishred, the all-killing thousand cuts. Class dismissed. End of story. Story number two. The judging written by a glass of whiskey. We are the judges. All will be judged before our old seeing eyes. Not perhaps the happiest news ever heard by the human species, and definitely not the happiest ever heard by the UN diplomat standing before them. Um, what does that mean? Uh, uh, more precisely, the limited intel he had been given indicated that they could swat them like flies, if they so desired. We will see how you treat the lesser of yourself, the lowest of your hierarchies, and if we find the result to be satisfiable, give you access to the stars. The unsaid threat seemed to hang heavy in the air. And if you fail, oh, you don't have to worry about that. That worried him immensely. That sea now, your poorest areas, are roughly fifty years behind the more advanced. Good for most species, but it seems you're in the middle of quite a rapid change. We put that as two hundred years bad. As he continued to list thing after thing, there were many bad, a few good here and there. Apparently, giving more than was spent on military was considered good and some of the countries referred to as fortunate passed that target. When they came to the part of recent history, he slightly zoned out. Bad, bad, bad. This was probably not going well. Finally, we have subspecies. I'm afraid there is some confusion here. It seems some species are referred to as family by many, but no genetically link is present could you clarify? After many hours, he'd finally been given a question. Would this be good or bad? Um, uh, that would be domesticated animals for social comfort. Many points had been raised about the use of domesticated animals. Many bads. Social comfort. Friends, they are kept and taken care of to provide friendship. You mean you keep animals that have no other function other than to be your uh, friends. Uh, well, uh, they do have other uses, but uh, recently that is the primary reason that they are kept. For the first time, the aliens looked different, happy. It was hard to tell about something with that many tentacles. Hmm, we will abide by your social classification then, and consider the more numerous of these for judging. He hoped another long list of bads would not follow this new classification. So, dogs, 
They seem to be referred to as humanity's best friends in many texts, and there is apparently even some festivals to celebrate them. It seems they co-evolved with you. Peculiar. So, some kind of symbiosis, then. We do not know how to classify this according to our rules. In, in a good way. Hope. Yes. Oh, rather. These questions are centered on amount of suffering of the subspecies. If they still exist, that is. Although there is certainly suffering towards these dogs, it's regarded to be morally reprehensible to a degree foreign to us. It seems they are treated better than many of your own people. Remarkable. The creature turned towards itself as if in some kind of discussion. He couldn't hear anything as it seemed to be absorbed in his own thoughts. Human, we have come to a conclusion. It had barely been a few seconds since the last statement. That fast, um, uh, you, you sure you don't need some more time to think about it? The part about not worrying still worried him. Yes, it is unusual, but you are an unusual species. You're not the worst, but not far off. Good treatment of your fellow humans seems to, in most cases, only reach those closest to you. Your history is filled with the most despicable acts, many of them still continuing to this current date. This was not good. In summary, many bads, a few goods, but... Come on, come on! You broke our questions regarding subspecies. Broke did not have positive connotations. Um, broke, yes, broke. Because of this, you cannot be judged. Goodbye. And with that, they dumped him off the ship and left Earth behind. Many hours later, he was finally allowed to go home. His best friend had been waiting patiently for him, and as soon as he opened the door, jumped at him. Oh, come down, boy, down! Now, who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? A good boy, indeed. All their worries would have come true. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click, click, click. With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I would just quickly like to give thanks to our tier 5 members. Elithia, Barky, Pudicule, Meridian117, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albarden Gusta, Savage Patch Papa, and Lord Azrakal.